So I want to talk a little bit about safety today in regards to trapped oil and residual pressure in hydraulic systems. When we work on a, a hydraulic system of a machine, uh, we're doing so when the machine is parked and typically blocked out and tagged out. But that doesn't mean there isn't potentially some energy in the form of stored pressure in the hydraulic system. So before we lock out and tag out the machine, generally we want to try and put it in what's known as a zero energy state. And that usually involves getting rid of stored energy that may be uh, in hydraulic hoses and hydraulic cylinders like this one. And that pressure that could be uh, stored in those vessels is typically caused by gravity. If you park a machine with implements in the air uh, or some weight of the implements on the hydraulic cylinders, uh, because the porting of the cylinders and the hoses is generally trapped and locked when you park the machine, well, then you could have weight being turned into pressure. Uh, an early pioneer of the physics of fluid power and hydraulics was a guy named Blaise Pascal, and he defined something we now use called Pascal's Law, which mathematically defines the relationship between force, pressure, and area. So if I trap oil, in this case I'm trapping some air, but we imagine there's oil in this hydraulic cylinder, and I don't let it out of this port at the bottom of the cylinder, there's a piston in here that's pushing down on the fluid, in this case, of course, air, but normally it would be hydraulic oil. And if I put a force, in other words, a weight, or a force against the end of the cylinder, there's an effective area of the circular piston inside this cylinder that starts pushing on the trapped fluid, in this case, air, and trying to compress the air. Um, and if I keep my finger over the port, I'm building pressure. If I take my finger off the port, see the effect of that escaping pressure. Now I'm not building enough pressure that that's going to be particularly dangerous here. I'm going to push it down with the force I can exert and only sealing it up with my finger. But in hydraulic systems you can have massive amounts of weight and uh, building a, a large amount of pressure inside a cylinder. And if that pressure is allowed to escape in the form of hydraulic oil shooting out towards us, that can be very dangerous. You just notice there's uh, a couple of posters here, uh, safety posters talking about the issues and the dangers of escaping oil. What can happen if, if high pressure oil escapes out of a pinhole in a hose or out of a connector that we may be disconnecting intentionally to change a line or to do some service work on a machine? High pressure oil escaping through a small orifice or a small opening can escape at very high velocity, hundreds of miles an hour. Now, hydraulic oil is generally a mineral-based oil, very similar to uh, engine oils that you might be familiar with. Uh, and if it gets on your skin, it's not that big of a concern. It's generally in an MSDS sheet. Uh, hydraulic oils are defined as a minor skin irritant. You want to wash those off. Um, that's not the danger we're talking about here. Here we're talking about oil escaping at such high velocity that it can actually penetrate your skin and get into your bloodstream. So if it enters your body by piercing your skin, uh, that's a real concern because then once it's in your bloodstream, it starts circulating with your blood and it is a poison in your bloodstream. And you'll get an infection very quickly and you can develop what's known as gangrene. And if it's not treated properly, which usually involves some fairly complex surgeries, uh, if it's not treated, you can end up with amputations and it can even be fatal. So we want to avoid, rather than deal with that, we want to avoid uh, escaping fluids. We want to avoid working on machines where there's trapped fluids under pressure. So we'll look at a couple of machines in a second here that uh, talk about how we can park them before we lock out and tag out a machine. What we can do potentially with the controls, and how we can uh, ensure that machine's put into a zero energy state, and we can relieve all the pressures in the uh, in the vessels, the hoses, the cylinders, etc., on the machine before we start working on it. Now that's easier said than done because every machine is going to have a different procedure. Every every brand, every model, uh, we're going to have to consult the operation maintenance manual, the service manual to see what the exact procedure is, but I'll show you a couple of examples of one machine that's got
got uh, manual directional control valves, so the operator control the hydraulic flow. One that's got more sophisticated pilot hydraulic systems. We've got various different types of control systems, and the objective in trying to put the machine in the zero energy state is going to be trying to let the oil out of all of the ports of all of the cylinders, not let it out externally, but let it out internally through the hoses back to the hydraulic tank, the reservoir that contains the fluid where it's not pressurized. So how we're going to do that is going to vary from machine to machine, but we're basically going to want to make sure that all the implements are resting on the shop floor or on the ground for outside when we park that machine. Nothing's being held up by trapped fluid off of the ground. There's no external forces pushing down on the cylinders like gravity or other forces trying to compress that fluid. Fluid's incompressible, but you can still put it under pressure. 